This is uh, uh, Prime is the uh, case manager program that Bay Area Legal Aid uses from mm -hmm. uh, John Kemp's Caseworks. Um, we're using a version 12. I can't remember the iteration, but uh, basically the newest uh, version. So I'm just going to open up a new eligibility record, and we kind of walk through uh, how we do it. The first step is determining uh, a, a problem code. I'm just going to um, I'm going to take actually problem code 37, which is a domestic violence case, which is uh, not untypical for us. And then we automatically click on the auto number to, to assign a case number to the case. Uh, the staff uh, person entering it, which in this case is myself, uh, and the date are automatically filled in. There's a kind of John Doe um, name entered by default, but I'm just going to put in um, a kind of test date here. And then typically we'll go to try to uh, get the eligibility information and um, getting uh, the information as to the amount of income is first. I'm just going to put in a, a random amount here. Uh, and then we qualify whether there's uh, any assets that might uh, present some eligibility problem. Then we gather the, uh, the family size here in terms of adults and children. I'll just put an arbitrary amount there. Um, and uh, then we uh, can click on um, uh, the, once we've established the amount of the family and the eligibility, we can click on the poverty amount here to just do a quick check whether it's over the 125%, which is the LSC uh, limit. We will click on LSC eligibility if we've done that. As soon as that happens, if there's some things we haven't checked that we need to, then this kind of error screen pops up and uh, reminds folks uh, other things to do. In this case, we need to check whether there is uh, uh, future uh, income, and that's where the, we check this. This is an LSO requirement, whether we've asked whether there might be some future income that's known about at the time of the uh, eligibility. Um, and that gets checked like that. And then the final thing is to establish um, the citizenship or alienage of the, of the potential client. We click on citizen, obviously it's a fairly straightforward amount. What I'd like to show you is something that we actually built into our version of Prime, um, and it can be added to other uh, programs if they want it. There, are, there is a feature that's part of Prime that's called special programs. It lets you, lets you customize to specific aspects of your cases that uh, might not be covered by the general aspects of Prime, but it's actually very powerful and, and not difficult to build uh, feature of Prime. And what we've built in here is um, our non-citizen special program. And what that brings up is the various eligibility categories under the LSC regs for uh, eligible aliens, so to speak, and then uh, the various documentation that's acceptable uh, to establish that. In this case, I'll just say it's a, uh, well, let me use, since we, we used a domestic violence here, uh, under the uh, VAWA law, there's uh, various categories that, uh, it, as long as we can establish that um, there was uh, one of these conditions here listed under the eligibility category, then uh, whether or not they otherwise have been processing an alien uh, application uh, or legal alien application, we can still handle the case. In this case, if we if we certify that one of these uh, facts are present, uh, then we don't have to uh, fill out any of the other documentation. If it was a legal permanent resident or one of these other categories, then we need to show here what the documentation is and be able to put the document in here. The advantage of this is, and the note here uh, is kind of our verification of this, if we check that, yes, this is a, a, a verifiable status for non-citizen eligibility, um, then just by making this check, our, our, our advocate or attorney um, is qualifying the case under, LG, uh, under LSC uh, laws. Uh, we don't actually uh, have any other copies, typically, in a case of documentation or so on, as long as we've noted it here. And this is uh, survived under audit with LSC. So once we click this, then we can come back to the 
uh, applicant information here, and you notice now a red labeling here comes up and says non-citizen eligibility has, has been confirmed. We also can uh, gather uh, addressing information here, and if it's a, uh, a homeless situation, then we will uh, state, uh, state that. I'm going to just put in here our office zip code. Once we put in the zip, we just click on citizen and state, and it automatically determines the, uh, the city uh, and uh, county of eligibility. And then typically we will also um, try to gather birth date at this point because that's used in uh, many other ways within our program. And then once we've uh, established all that, if we click on this Save Send button, then what happens is that a full case record has been dope opened up. Um, and all the information that is uh, relevant from the uh, eligibility record comes forward and a new case is opened up. So that's essentially the process of establishing eligibility and opening up a new case. That's actually on a separate page here of the eligibility. And uh, so if you wanted to do an eligibility check, we just do uh, click on conflict check, it basically then presents a, another form that lets you do a number of uh, you know, just a two-way conflict check between you and, and the adverse party and that uh, sort of thing. I'll do a six-way check that kind of checks everything, and there are no conflict records in this case. Again, we gave a fairly unusual test name, but if you had another more common name, it would check through our conflicts table and come up with uh, conflicts directly with uh, the adverse party, with the, uh, a prior case with the client, uh, and then whether uh, either of those had been adverse parties in any other action. And then we'd be able to make a determination by examining that case. You click on this button down here and be able to examine any prior cases or uh, adverse party records or conflict uh, records that we have in our database. So that's the essential process that we can go through. And you can typically we'll do that at the beginning of the case. You can also do it at a later time if it comes if it becomes an issue. An issue. And uh, I'll come back over to the case record. Uh, the other thing that's most relevant in terms of um, being able to do conflicts checks and so on, we can put a non-adverse spouse in here. Uh, so that's in a situation not of domestic violence, typically, or something like that, where uh, the spouse might be adverse. But just uh, to be able to put that in so that there's a, a, a conflict check that can come off of that. So that's, that's the basic thing of conflict check. We go over to um, search for records, all the search, and, and open up it. This is our basic search screen, or the basic search screen in uh, Prime for searching clients. And you notice there's buttons up here that allow you to see all or just search for my staff, which is a typical way our staff is just when you just want to get your case. I'll just open up this case that we just created here and you open the intake, you can keep that search screen open so that if you filtered by certain things that you don't want to repeat, the, the screen can stay open, and then you'll come back to it. You'll notice here on the case record that there, up here on the top there are various buttons, including time. So if I want to open up a, a, a time record that's connected to this case, the, the quickest and simplest way is just to click on time. And what happens is this time record opens up, and the reason it's more efficient is it's already brought in the, the, the name of the, the, the case, the, the case number. Uh, it's, it's filled out uh, my information and office, and the day, today's date, and so on. And uh, one can start a, uh, a time uh, clock running by doing the start and stopping time. I actually think very few of our advocates use that. This is typically kind of after they've been working on the case, perhaps the initial interview with the client. It could be a phone call at, at a later time where they pull up the client record. Um, and then all you have to do, again, I didn't establish funding code uh, earlier on this. Typically, we would do that at the very beginning. And it automatically fills in everything, including the particular uh, time activity code. If you open up a time record from the case, it's assuming it's a case-related time activity code, which are the codes that are required in LSC. In this case, I'll just put the minimum time that uh, we use, which is 0.25 on the case. And then if it is a case-related thing, 
we'll ask uh, our attorneys or advocates to put a, a more specific case work code in here. For instance, interview, discovery, there's various uh, trial-related, trial prep-related things, just a phone call. I'll just do a phone call here. And then typically we want a very brief note, but enough to identify what uh, happened in this case. We'll say this is a phone call with client. Um, and then once, uh, once you finish filling in everything that you want in the time record, then you just click on close. It saves it. I'll point out another couple aspects of this. Uh, if this was a case that was PAI and we'd identified it as a private attorney involvement case, this actually would automatically fill in. Uh, you could, uh, on another case, if you're consulting with a private attorney on the case, even if the case itself isn't, you could click on PAI and include the time record as one of our PAI time uh, eligible uh, issues. Um, and then the other thing is if, uh, for instance, this time was related to one of our other projects, then uh, you click on project and we have a list of ongoing projects. And this can include time that's just matter time uh, that's not tied to a case, or it could be time on a case that in, that in turn should click to a project. So I'll just show you that. Uh, and I'll click on close, which automatically saves that time record. So you can see it's pretty quick to enter time records from there. Uh, once the time is in, I can see related time just by clicking on the page three here. And you notice it shows me all my time records. In this case, we just have one. Um, at the end of the day, automatically in the background, the, the, all the time that's been entered on cases is summed up. And this would automatically be filled in. I can do that individually for this case. And you see now that that 0.25 uh, total time comes up on the, on the record. I'm going to close out of the case record and go to one other place uh, where we uh, enter, um, enter time. And I'm going to come over here to our main menu. Um, and you can come from the Add menu and then open up what's called a time batch uh, record. And this is uh, the same fields, but it lets you at the end of a day, which is a typical way that our advocates and attorneys will enter cases. They'll, they'll keep a time log sheet uh, by, on their desk and then note their time as they go along during the day. And particularly if it's non-case related, uh, this is a more efficient. But even for case related things, they may have several phone calls and so on. So rather than uh, doing it, um, as they go along, they'll do it in a, in a batch time method. But this lets you also enter in, let's say, matter. So I'm, I'm doing work that is legally uh, legal work, but not tied to a case. And I just put uh, matter in the in the case number. And then I can choose from our various uh, uh, matter codes, which could be any number of things. For instance, let's say this is I was spending time running our pro se clinic. That would be a, a particular. Uh, type of code here, and then putting in uh, an amount of time, 0.5, so on, and then briefly also putting in a note um, is uh, all that you need. In this case, really, that's all you need to get a time record. If there's any of the rest of this that's relevant, we could do that. For instance, county could be relevant if you're working in more than one county. I'll just put Alameda for this case. And then as soon as I finish all the required fields, I can just click in down here and a new, another record, and you can keep doing that for a whole bunch of time records. Uh, as soon as you go to a new time record, uh, it uh, saves uh, the one you're working on. So they're automatically saved in the database and makes it very efficient. You know, as we track uh, both case-related activity, but we also track matter. We also track all of our leave and all of our supporting activity, which is anything that isn't directly case-related or isn't doing legal work that we would call a matter. We prepare our time sheets for payment for payroll purposes entirely out of our uh, information in Prime. So all staff, even if it's support staff that are not putting in time for cases or for matters, enter their time into Prime. And then we uh, prepare our time sheets out of Prime. And I'll quickly show that. It's also part of, I guess, showing some of how we use reports. So we could just move to that. You notice when I click on our report menu here, you can prepare reports here, and I'll go through those maybe in a second. But I can quickly repair timesheets also. Um, so let me just go to the, the, the past uh, 
timesheet uh, two-week payroll, and I'll just enter those dates here. And then, so you just put the, the date range of the timesheet, and then I click on a uh, print preview. And with luck, yes, it comes up. And this is our Bay Legal uh, by legal timesheet. So you see we've, we've uh, programmed a form in here that allows you to track all the different sorts of time types in here, supporting activity or case time. I do mostly administrative uh, work in terms of my uh, computer work and computer support work, so you don't have the type of case activity that you'd have here. But uh, this is a, a pay sheet that's been printed out and submitted to our, our uh, uh, finance staff. While we're here, we can show quickly um, uh, some of the reports that we have. And there's a couple features that I think are useful uh, in Prime in this. One here is, as, as you see, we have a search or preview page of all reports. And this is uh, uh, the kind of list of all the various reports that are programmed into Prime. And you notice this list is um, is listed by table. So if you go through and you know you want to get a report of some of your client activity, well, that comes out of the client SW table. So if you come down here, you'll notice there's a whole bunch of client SW uh, related forms uh, or reports, I should say. Um, so I can go through any of these. And let's just say cases pending on a date. And if I click on that, um, you'll notice up here it says double click on the row to preview. So if I double click on the row, it quickly gives me a preview of what that, um, what that report would look like and lets you decide, is that the report I'm looking for? And I can quickly close that. Many of them I can just run once I decide that I want it open. And, um, and this is, for instance, an eligibility report. So if I double click on that, this shows me all the cases that are uh, perhaps over the eligibility um, amount. And you can see there's a, 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 a lot of uh, reports that are programmed into Prime. Um, obviously, most of the time we're using um, just a, a few of those. Uh, but it, it allows us to take reports out of all of the different tables and, and modules, um, including our grants reports that are here, um, reports for PII purposes about our lawyers, uh, and so on. So. Um, this is a pretty useful feature in terms of getting at some of the time uh, reports. I'll, I'll show you one here, time specifics. If we double click on that, this is a report that lets you run a report by advocate during any period of time and show all the time that's been done on a case. Uh, this is a report we'll run when we need to do um, attorney's fees uh, or report to a funder about our activity. The other place to go for reports is on the on the just reports here. And we have uh, a lot of reports, again, on our prime cases. We want to run reports for um, our LSC purposes. We go to the, the uh, LSC CSR. And then once you click on that report, it brings up a what's known as query by form. And this lets us uh, narrow the report so we can just do it per office for a certain period of time, so on and so forth. And in this case, I'll do a report that shows for the full period of 2011 our CSR for the entire program. So you just put that range of dates in here. But then I can, again, filter by advocate. I can filter and limit it by particular office. I can uh, limit it by other sorts of special funding codes or by county. I can also pick fields that aren't listed on the form here out of our kind of user things. I can uh, send this. Most typically, we'll send this to the screen to report, but you can you can click on these buttons to send it over to Excel or to a, an RTF uh, document um, uh, in order to be used in other ways. Once I click on prepare report, that runs the query in the background that's going to be used. And as soon as I click on produce report, it comes up. And for those that are using this, uh, the CSR report, which obviously has been used in LSC for a long while, you'll see how easy it is to produce that our stats for the whole year. So that's a typical way. And, and many of the reports that you choose will then take you to this query by form that in a very easy way allows you to filter without knowing anything more about creating queries or using any more complicated form. Well, client
client management. Um, I guess, again, the search screen is the main place we go to search for our, our clients. Um, and you can click very easily and see all the cases. Everybody can access the, all of the data, all the cases in their data. You can just click by office. You can also just click by staff number to see those. This just easily brings up all the cases you are either uh, the primary uh, counsel or a co-counsel on a case. And then I could just double click on any particular case to bring it up. Um, if I uh, if I say to leave the search open, then I can just quickly come back to that same search. Um, you know, once I have a list like this open, then I can use some of the filtering right from here to just, uh, in this case, here are the problem codes on a case listed here. If I just click into this field and then say filter by selection, then that quickly gives me a list of just all my problem codes cases. Um, and if I um, uh, come back over here and filter by staff number, I can take off that filter. So it gives you a pretty uh, flexible way to reach either all your cases or any, any particular cases. I can also uh, filter by uh, the date. So if I just want to see my all the cases open during 2012, if I just select 2012 here and filter by selection, then my list gets limited that way. So. Uh, without knowing a whole lot about computer uh, programming, it, it does allow you to, with these search screens, to, to reach uh, and filter your cases just to get to a certain number of them. Um, contacts. Uh, let, let me show you just quickly off of off of a particular case uh, the way we have contacts that are listed by a case. And you notice there are several pages, uh, if, if we call them, or different form pages off of a, a client record. And intake page one has a lot of the demographics of the client. Intake page two tends to have other information about the, the, the larger family or the particular legal matter we're doing and the funding and so on. Intake page three tends to have the closing information, including our ability to capture how much of money we've saved for the client and so on and so forth. We have a case notes uh, that allows us to, to show the notes on a case and add notes very quickly. But contacts is another separate one. We can uh, have uh, an existing contact, uh, so let's say a social worker that we work with on any number of our clients' cases. We can quickly reach that person. I'll just, just choose one here, pull that client, pull that up, and then just say use this contact. By doing that, what I've done is I've taken an existing contact we have in our da database and, and attached it to this case. It allows us to, to enter once contacts for instance, opposing counsel, uh, other attorneys, uh, social workers, case management uh, folks, so on and so forth, the various people that you work with with your clients, and uh, then attach them without recreating them all the time. If you come to a place where you have a new contact that you want to associate with a case, then you quickly just establish um, a new client. In this case, I'll just uh, establish this as a, a, a factual witness in the case. Um, and we'll just put it into the database like this. I can enter as much information as I want, and uh, then as soon as I do save, stay, that is uh, established or linked to the case. Um, and then I can uh, search my database back through the search menu uh, to bring up any of those contacts and look at them and look at uh, how the cases they're associated with, uh, just like with the other search menus. This shows all of the contacts. So that's that's the basic mechanism for tracking all the various people that are connected to the cases, uh, but not our clients. And on any case, again, off of intake page two, you notice down here in the bottom there's several other things which can bring up a prior case that involved this client. I can email the client if you have that information in, but another here is document tracking. And uh, what this allows me to do um, is uh, this has changed in more recent versions of Prime. So now you can actually copy uh, any document into the SQL database that contains all the other Prime information. It's a very efficient way, particularly for us. Instead of uh, the old way that document management used to happen in Prime, which is you'd have a, a document somewhere on your network uh, you know, uh, folder uh, system, and you'd just basically uh, be attaching a link to that document uh, that would be stored here. But the document still would be on your your hard drives, your network hard drives somewhere. 
uh, what we have found is since we're a multiple office uh, program law firm, we have uh, uh, servers that are in different physical locations and accessing those doc documents across the wide area network can be uh, more difficult, can be slower, sometimes there's permissions issues. So what we've gone to is storing all the documents in the database and how I do that is quickly just create a folder that's just a, you know, a digital logical folder for this. I'll just entitle it pleadings. And again, this is pleadings connected to this particular case. And then once I've established a folder, then I can add a document. And it just reminds me that it's going to put it in the pleadings folder. And if I want this, uh, then I just confirm that. And then it just gives me a typical file open. I can navigate to any of uh, any of my folders. I'll go over here to network places. I'll just go to my own uh, folders. And we'll just pick any document just to show you how it works here. Um, let's just pick a PDF file that was a uh, timesheet from the past. I'll open and then it just confirms, do you want to save this to the SQL Server? If I say yes, it does. Otherwise, if I say no, it'll save just a, a link to the path of that document. If I say yes, then it uh, takes a few seconds. And then you notice there's a plus sign here, and here are the documents. And obviously, I can save any number of documents. I can also take this, uh, and I can create a new subfolder off of that and make other things. Um, as soon as I double click on this, it starts, uh, in this case, PDF running. Uh, which sometimes takes a few seconds, and then displays the document. So I could quickly get to any of the documents I saved. So that's the essence of, of document management. In its newest version, it's, it's uh, extremely powerful and I think uh, really useful. And we're, we're going to be using this more and more. Uh, most of those sorts of add things are off the add menu. And you can see here we already went through adding new eligibility a record, which then quickly you can turn into a new client record. You can add new PBI lawyers. Our PBI uh, coordinator does most of the work in managing that, along with law, uh, law firms. You can add time records. You can add PBI time all over on this thing. In this case, if I want to add a new staff member, I just go here. Uh, everything about a staff member obviously has a unique staff number. so. Uh, the first thing you do is try to search. So let's say I was adding a, a new staff in this office. What you want to do, our offices uh, have a numbering sequence. And uh, in this uh, central office, it's all in the early, um, in the early numbers off of here under, uh, under 1,000. So let's say I, the last in this sequence is 500 for uh, Lisa, who was just uh, added in this office. So I would add the next number here and just give it arbitrarily the number of 501. We just want to make sure. And then uh, I'm just going to do a, a, a test record. I'll do TT for test. We can mark current employee or not in our staff members. What this allows us to do is for all the current people, obviously this is checked. But if, as staff members leave, once that's unchecked, then staff, number, staff members don't come up in the listings uh, of case stuff. And it allows us to more efficient about how we're working with our list. They, they're much smaller, obviously. So I'll just make this a test member. The only things that are really required are the name, the position. Let's say it's a staff attorney in this case. And then we need to ass, uh, uh, assign um, any staff member to an office. Uh, and that stuff that allows us also to, to put them in one of our main units in this case. Um, I'll just put it in their support staff. And then it allows us to put things like bar numbers, uh, so on and so forth, uh, has notes about it so that we can uh, track it. Um, this is very, obviously, essential for anybody to have the information in here. The one, a, a thing we have added here is to put unpaid on here so that we put all of our volunteers, volunteer law clerks, attorneys who are volunteering with us, support staff, undergraduates who may be working with us, law graduates, all of them are entered in. And typically, those are unpaid. And, and this is very, very useful for our uh, private bar involvement coordinator because we have have to report to LSC and to other funders, um, you know, how much time we're getting from all of those different sorts of people. And by uh, setting up staff member uh, and, and have, using this unpaid uh, field, it allows us to pull out at the, at the end uh, um, information about them, including all the time they're spending working on cases that. Uh, 
let me just show you another little feature in terms of another type of record to add that, that might be of interest. And this is something we had, which is a difficult person. And, and this, I think, is a common uh, thing that happens, which is uh, we get clients who come in that, that tend to have problems. And uh, at the point uh, that person becomes a difficult person, we want to have this in our database. So they're going to come in uh, again to another one of our offices. They may come in through the phone with our legal advice line. And we want to have a record so that we quickly can search and understand this is a client that's going to Know, has problems. And so I'll just kind of quickly add uh, a name here uh, and let it demonstrate, which is uh, what's, what's the action we're recommending, which is, uh, and here are some of the things, call the police, do not represent, do not schedule, so on, require a client agreement. In this case, we'll do kind of the most extreme, which is call the police, uh, the date that this is put in, we'll just do today's date, you know, select it from the pop-up calendar. Um, and then Put in my uh, staff number. Let's see how that pops up here. I guess it comes up this way. And I'll select myself off of this. Um, and you can actually have a specific incident at what point did this happen in terms of eligibility, uh, so on and so forth. And we'll just say client intake and severity of the difficulty. What did, what happened? Were they shouting? Were they swearing? Were they threatening? Were they violent? So on and so forth. Um, and then in what, to, to what staff uh, was this being done, and I'll, I'll just choose the staff right here. So this is an example of um, how we have adopted a, a, a part, of, and, and Kemp's built this for us. It's now included with uh, um, all the versions of Prime that goes out that allows you to really have tools that uh, allow you to deal with your clients in ways that uh, you don't always think of at the front end of Let me add other services because that's a common one. Again, this is an LSC requirement. Uh, if we're doing work uh, that doesn't relate to a specific client but is providing services, and typically those fall into either community education, which are the first set, uh, you know, self-help materials, workshops, or other CLEs, we're doing pro se clinics, or referring. So let's take a referral. If I make a referral, you know, I can just choose that. How many people? Typically, it's one. Even if it's a family. We'll just put in the, uh, uh, the county. And then the other th required thing is what was the referral about. And I'll just put about bankruptcy in this case. Um, and that lets us, again, very quickly gather information about all the referrals we do, the time we spend on, on, uh, on uh, community legal education or in pro se uh, clinics when we do a, a number of clinics, particularly with domestic violence and housing. And our time involved in these clinics and the fact that we've done that work and how many people it serves is all uh, captured here in this. Well, let me just show you one other thing which uh, I think is useful. And actually, uh, Kemp is about to rebuild this to make it even kind of better. Uh, and that is uh, our projects. Because as I alluded to earlier, a, a lot of the work that you do actually falls into like ongoing projects. And um, this is something that wasn't an earlier version of Clients or Windows, but now has been added to Prime. And it allows you to, to capture the specifics of what you're doing on those projects. And also, more importantly, I think, link together time that you're spending that would otherwise just go into the general matter, and then pull them together. So let's just take a, a, a pending project. And let me hope to uh, pick one that's here. Here's one that I think is an ongoing juvenile court clinics. And you notice you can link cases. So here are some of the cases that are linked to this. Um, and then uh, it lets you uh, add information. So here's a, a form that allows you to describe the project. Uh, you can establish goals. You can uh, establish uh, goals for finishing date, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can associate staff that's uh, with the project. In this case, you see uh, several staff in here. Um, and then you can quickly kind of pull out a time report from, from this menu right now. So this includes all the different individual records that various staff have put into running these uh, juvenile justice clinics in this, or juvenile court clinics in this matter, uh, but pulls them all together. So I can uh, pull out at any period of time how much time are we spending on this project. Um, and Kemp 
is going to rewrite this uh, management form and system, if you will, to make it even more useful. It, it uh, tends to be a little klutzy in, in its present version, but I think having a way to manage your work within projects is a really critical thing because uh, at least in legal services and I think in most public interest uh, law firms, uh, a very substantial amount of time is just on matters. It's not linked to specific cases. And unless there's a way for you to group together your time that you're spending on uh, projects that are either separately funded or that you're trying to get funded or you're trying to uh, maintain support for, unless you can have a way to report out of your database your time, the time and the specific tasks you're doing, I think you really uh, lose a lot of power. So I think it's a very good feature that's in Prime. And I The other thing that I'll just briefly um, show is has just been rebuilt, and that is what is now called as an inter interview system. And what this allows you to do is to um, add any number of series of questions um, uh, into the database and thus um, create sort of lists of interview questions. And I'll just use bankruptcy in this case, um, and we'll show all. So these are, these are questions that were already added into this interview system that are linked to uh, bankruptcy matters. And what this allows you to do is to add these questions and then um, add specific responses to questions also. Um, so let me see if that's in here. I'm not sure we can. Uh, OK, there you go. So, um, Here's kind of a particular, uh, uh, you know, have you filed bankruptcy? If you get a yes, what's the response? And you, and you can save these responses. So it allows you to run a, a, uh, either the general intake that the general staff are doing, or if you have a, uh, a general uh, legal advice line such, that, such as we have where eligibility comes in through the phone for them, you can establish any number of lists for questions down to very specific sub-problems. Uh, level, and uh, then have staff that may or may not have as much expertise be able to, to use these uh, already prepared interview systems to build, to, to uh, interview and, and store the answers, and in fact, pop up the specific advice that's specific to uh, different situations. I think over time, any of the, the legal services programs or other public interest that run hotline system or legal advice line systems are going to want to use something like this. And it's, uh, it's tremendous that it, it, built, it, it lives within the, the case management system itself of Prime, because uh, then it allows you to uh, develop those uh, initial eligibility questions and, and build it right into the case uh, information that you have. The other thing I suppose that is here is there are some significant help systems here built in within the, the system. So I don't know if uh, you can kind of, you know, how, how you add in text. If I just click on one of those, then this help pops up here. Um, and then, uh, and, and these are help uh, scripts, if you want, that you can um, uh, build yourself and kind of add into the system as you go along. So if there's specific uh, protocols that you have for your law firm, um, it is not hard to add these help things in, uh, customized to 